Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays, The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth, Eden, because I'm not man enough for the lost. Let's see what we got going on here. Oh god, 1 HP. Eden's Blessing gave me the bean, I think, and then we have Fear Shots. Decent stats, except for our HP. FGLC8F36. Pill is bombs or key. Um, Spirit Heart. Enough money to buy a Spirit Heart, but, but no Spirit Heart directly um, this is a great run that unfortunately has bonitis we could easily be boned here this is like I don't know I don't want to get too dark with the analogies <laughs> this is like being born with an incredible amount of intelligence but never having the pension to look both ways before you cross the street right like, we could become the next Neil Smoke to Grass Tyson on this run, but we could just as easily get hit by a bus when we're like nine. So, we need to be very careful, build up a little bit of crossing the street armor here. Dead Onion is useful. The Cancer Trinket is useful. We have a golden key that allows us to get into our shop, inside of our shop. We do uh, pick up a Spirit Heart. There's also two cents, or we're, I should say, we are two cents away from being able to pick up a bomb. And if we can pick up. A bomb, there's a variety of potential tinted rocks that could be very much to our benefit. That red chest could have uh, expedited the process just by, oh, wow, giving us a spirit heart directly. If we had not gotten the spirit heart, we would be dead right now. I got hit by a champion. Not not super common to get hit by a champion, but uh, certainly not rare. It's not unusual to be hit by a champion. It's not unusual to get fucked by a champion. When I see you trying to kill me, champion. It's not unusual to see me die. Come on, there's got to be an extra penny on here, right? Oh, or an extra spirit heart. That works as well. This is where we're at in the Isaac skill curve, by the way. If we ever take damage on the first floor, we're lucky to be alive. At least on an Eden streak, because it could have gone south, man. It, this this could have been... Uh, the end of our run, if we just had things go slightly differently. We might as well kill our boss first. And Actually, Larry Jr. seems like it's going to be a very, very easy boss to kill. Given the circumstances of us having Dead Onion, which is effectively a, a kind of shitty piercing shot. But only because it lowers your effective range via shot speed. Uh, Latchkey is pretty good. I mean, we only need one more penny to buy a bomb. We actually have a bomb now. What am I, what am I doing here? So you're going to go back blow this up. Black market, maybe? Golden chest, but we have a golden key. Okay, we paid a bomb for a tower card. The upside on a tower card is probably one bomb. So, there is that. Yep, can't even push that into the right spot. So, we whiffed on that, basically. I'm not too disappointed, because we did get another spirit heart back anyway, but somewhat disappointing for sure. Can an enemy be poisoned if they're also afraid? Only things you can think about in Isaac. There's enough bombs for us for sure. We'll actually save our money so maybe we can get an arcade on the next floor. Because um, if if you can't poison an enemy via the bean in this case, uh, when they're already afraid or vice versa, then there's a little bit of some you know competitive kind of destruction between our, our tier effects here, which is unfortunate. Okay, two lemon parties. One range upgrade. The range upgrade is pretty helpful considering we did get... Uh, a shot speed downgrade in the form of Dead Onion. Lemon Party is really, really useful. I think this could be our secret room. Uh, if the boss... Ooh, no, we gotta stick with the Cancer Trinket. Uh, which is probably the best thing we got on this floor by far. But if the boss is uh, not flying, Lemon Party will kill it. Way faster than our tears actually will. So, honestly, this is a wonderful start now. There was a time, uh, not so long ago, when I was singing Tom Jones. Because it seemed like we were possibly going to... Uh, find ourselves in a horrible situation. That time no longer exists, thankfully. I did use Lemon Party on a mini-boss. And you know what? I'd do it again if I had the chance. We ended up getting a Chariot card out of that, which is uh, actually good for half of a Spirit Heart. I'll use that to uh, save ourselves the damage that we uh, otherwise would have taken by going into our Curse Room here. And I think our advantages are starting to stack up in a way that makes this run very, very compelling right now. In fact, what if we actually embrace... The loss of the half spirit heart, and instead get this demon judgment to start paying out. Look at this. Oh, we did it! Half a spirit heart exchanged for synth oil. Extra damage, it's a syringe, and a little bit of extra range, all of which we could definitely use here. So that is huge. 
Spider Bite is actually a really, really nice tier effect. Uh, Addicted does nothing poor for us. This is lovely. I am starting to realize we've just got too many tier effects. I wish we had an Enter the Gungeon-esque ability to trade some of those in and just get a random item out of it, but... Sadly, it does not exist. We got Key Bum for free from our secret room, and we have another Tinted Rock. Small Rock would be the icing on the cake. No, but uh, a key and a Spirit Heart is a, an acceptable trade. Also, my favorite Comedy Central sketch television show. Television show. Alright. We are actually steamrolling right now. It's amazing. This is what I like about it, of course. It's just, I thought there was an enemy in here. Satanic Bible just puts this maybe in, like, completely certain victory territory. All you need is good damage, man. If you had good damage and, like, strong play, maybe a little bit of luck at the start as well, that's gonna do a ton for you. I mean, the situation we're in right now, we got pretty lucky to get some awesome items, but we didn't really ball out of control with any pickups, with the possible exception of the Cancer Trinket. And, you know, depending on how you feel about Synth Oil, it's a great item. Is it, like, you know, bomb status? Like, it's... It's an incredible pickup. I think it's debatable. I think it could be up there, though. Um, what I'm getting at, though, no Brimstone, no Mom's Knife, no Death's Touch, but all of a sudden, holy shit, we're, we're unkillable as a result of uh, a few solid items, and honestly, our starting stats kind of buoying us up to this point. Uh, that was uh, very poor damage on my part there, but this is uh, not quite unlosable, but approaching it. Which I feel like I, every time I say not quite unlosable, it always follow is followed up by but approaching it. But the you know I guess the relevance is is in the cadence that I put out there. Uh, we don't need that. A little bit of a misplay. But honestly, truth be told, we'll probably be at uh, twelve spirit hearts before too long anyway, and then we won't have to worry about whether or not we're min maxing these battery charges too much. Wheel of Fortune. I'm going to blow that up uh, to try to find the second secret room as soon as we get a bomb. Assuming we get a bomb. I would actually love to get some HP here if only so that I could actually get a deal with the devil that cost me red hearts instead of a deal with the devil that cost me spirit hearts. But again, it's probably largely irrelevant. I'm in this weird, like, I, I don't want to call it an Isaac Funk. But it's like, uh, if you were looking at it on a graph, it would be like this, it would be the, the gutter, it would be a ditch, you know? It would be like a, an upside-down uh, parabola. It would be a parabola with a negative inner... Uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say. It's been a while since I was in 12th grade math. Um, or 10th grade math, to be more realistic. Range upgrade is not that good anymore. I think we've got enough, but... Um, we're, we're at a point where lost streaks are too difficult. By and large, Eden streaks seem a little bit too easy. So I guess our options there are... You know, get better, practice as a lost, and, and take it to that point, which I think is, is fairly logical. Or, um, in Afterbirth Plus, then maybe this is why I'm attached to the idea of a rebalancing mod. But by the way, people are like, why, why does Isaac need rebalancing? You know, I put in all this practice, I should be kicking the game's ass. Yo, mods are optional, dog. If you don't want to use it, by all means. How many times do you see me use a mod on this channel? Like, zero. I am the laziest guy when it comes to... If I, I'd rather complain about a game and be like... Hey, like, if you tell me... Ooh, I don't really want that. If you tell me there's a mod that fixes it, I'll be like... Yeah, but then I've got to install it, right? Like, it's annoying. So believe you me, I understand if you're saying... You know, Isaac doesn't need rebalancing. I personally... I think would, would love to at least work on a mod that makes... Uh, that makes it a little bit harder while preserving what I like about the design. Not to say it would be definitive or anything like that. Uh, I guess we're leaving, unless we want to go to our shop. I avoided picking up, or, or sorry, I did pick up uh, the uh, Telepathy for Dummies in the hopes of spawning more libraries for the future. Yeah, Wheel of Fortune's not that valuable. I mean, we could blow it up if we had a bomb. We could use Hermit to save a key, get into our bomb area, or buy a bomb, I should say, then blow it up, probably get a second secret room out of it. Uh, honestly, I don't think that that is that valuable, actually. What a, what a weird sentence. I don't think that that is that valuable. How many fucking that's are in there? There's like a thousand. It might be three or four. Uh, we got Abel. I think I'm going to teleport out. Ideally, you probably want to end up using that teleport card to get out of boss rush, but we got a decent number of bombs. I think boss rush, um, the teleport card from that or for that could still exist. 
Uh, we might as well get that extra double penny back there. No reason to look a gift horse in the mouth there. Hello, my feline friends. Why, when you sit here, do you sit on the laptop? I have to know. There is ample space that is not a computer. It's starting to get, I know, like, in other parts of Canada and, and you know, accordingly probably other parts of America and the rest of the world as well, uh, it actually snowed over the past, you know, week or two weeks. But in Vancouver, it's 21 degrees Celsius today. We're starting to get into springtime weather. If you don't know yet, uh, people that live in the Pacific Northwest or even just, you know, more accurately, the west coast of the United States and, and Canada always brag about their weather to the point that it's insufferable. But for real, it's April. It's the start of April. It's starting to get, like, warm here. And you'd think, well, that sucks. I hate it when it gets too hot. That's the thing, man. It never gets too hot. It just permanently stays at, like, the exact correct temperature to make you feel as comfortable as possible. Yo, get off of the... No, don't jump on the actual computer. That's the... That's the wrong number. Okay, here, sit there. You sitting there? Don't wag your tail in my face like a... You know, have you paid for anything in this apartment? Did you pay for the laptop? Did you even pay for yourself? I guess that's not fair. I mean, the cat didn't choose to come into this world. And I guess in an indirect way, ad revenue from videos involving this cat, you know, at some point I'd have to pay royalties there, so... Maybe I'm not comfortable with the way that question would have to be answered in the end. But yeah, that's what I'm- uh, you're saying, you know, it's warm to sit on the laptop. Well, you may indeed be right, but it's also getting pretty warm here. But I guess it's still pleasant to have some warmth in your life. I'm gonna go a little hard on this to try to get an extra syringe, and we did get it. I think that's actually- it's not quite like a next level technique. Yo, it's your boy Northern Lion here with a crazy technique in Isaac. Give your spirit hearts to the demon judgment if he gives you a syringe. It's money in the bank, baby! We have now reached a compromise with the cat. It is sitting not on the laptop, resting its front paws on the laptop. You have to realize that a cat is basically like a petulant child. And it, it pushes you to try to find out the rules of engagement. And you know what? If you want to put your paws on the laptop, I'm not going to I'm not going to rebuke your compromise. That seems fair. I understand. I understand that you don't understand English, so it's not going to be easy for us to have a conversation with one another about what's happening. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? You don't speak English. You don't even really know your name, probably just the cadence in which we say it. Tons of cash. Uh without Guppy's tail, we're still get oh, that was probably a wooden nickel then, but, um, even though we don't have Guppy's tail, I am getting a surprising amount of golden chests. And if I'm being frank, a disappointing amount of golden chests given the number of keys that I don't have. I don't know if you can use that sentence in that fashion. Alright. Like 60, 61 cents and two luck upgrades there. I have to support the existence of these luck upgrades so that I can actually get uh, a higher chance of item drops. And not not item drops, but consumable drops. And if I do manage to pick up a key, uh, I don't really want to use it on this floor because the most obvious location to use it is probably to uh, go back and fight in that mob trap room, which I don't really want to do. I don't really want to pay five cents for a nickel right now either. No, well, it's not really paying five cents for a nickel. What I'm trying to say is that bombs are more valuable right now than uh, than money. Directly, at least. Even though I'm going to waste possibly two right here. Uh, we spent two. Did we waste two? Yes, we did, because we only got spiders out of it. So, we're about one minute ahead of schedule. One minute ahead of schedule for boss rush. Actually, we're way ahead of schedule now that it's an XL floor, so uh, a nice secondary objective for us on this floor is going to be getting uh, getting a teleportation card, and if we can get that, boss rush is free. Uh, another, like, secondary, maybe even primary objective is just pick up some fucking keys so that we can go to our item room shop, or item rooms shop, potentially library, etc, etc. For now, though, everything's going well. Even if we don't find it... Uh, or the game doesn't find it and it's hard to give us any keys. We're basically much stronger. There we go, one key. We're much stronger than we need to be in order to probably win this run. I mean, we're, I would say we're a little below average strength 
for the end of a run, which is really, really good. That's like saying, you know, you gotta... You don't know as much about biology as uh, someone who has a bachelor's of science in it. Yeah, well, if you're in ninth grade, that's your way ahead of schedule, man. You're way ahead of the curve. That is probably going to be enough keys, considering it's an unlimited number of them. Uh, there's our boss fight as well, so we might as well do the first boss. Monstro 2. I mean, even if we... What I'm trying to get at is that I think we have a pretty good chance of winning, even if we got no other reasonably valuable items for the rest of the game. You know, if we picked up, like, exclusively range upgrades for the rest of the game, I think we'd have a, an okay chance of winning. Good chance? Honestly, maybe, yeah. But okay chance for certain. Uh, I want to make sure I'm getting value out of the sun, so I'm just going to pop it right here. We can see a little bit of where we need to go. It is a long distance. That's okay. Um, picking up HP that we can use to finagle a deal with the devil. And you know what? I think we totally should go to our curse room. I don't mind that we're pushing, uh, you know, black and blue hearts out right now. Because we have, I wouldn't say an unlimited supply, but a, a large supply for certain. Um, yeah, okay. Well, I mean, now we just begin the, the Isaacness of this, which is pretty much just going to be going to our item rooms and shop. Hoping that the shop does not contain greed and the item rooms don't contain shit. And then we will leave this. Oh, wow. Heck of a, heck of a bomb there, Lou. Lubega? Lubomga? Doesn't really make any sense. Do you have to lick your paw on the laptop? I mean, we're not talking about a piece of space age technology here. It's a pretty cheap Acer that I got to run Visual Studio while I was on Japanese trains. But, like, it's still, I'm, I'm hoping to make that bad boy work for a few years. So if you could stop cleaning your ass on it, that would be good. Um, we picked up Succubus. Succubus is... Indisputably one of the best familiars is the way I would describe it. I would rather have Succubus than Little Brim, I think, most of the time. The exception will be if I'm doing, like, absolutely no damage. Then you want to have Little Brim, without a doubt, to, to kind of carry your ass. I'm not saying it's like a it's like a 10 out of 10 item versus a 2, but I, it might be like a 9 versus an 8. We'll open that chest on our way back. Oh, yeah, a little too slow. Shouldn't have chanced that. Leo relatively not worth very much at all for us kind of a little bit of a disappointment but may enable us to get a teleport card just kind of wasted two of diamonds i wasted it by getting 19 cents for free but still a little bit of a waste mathematically speaking considering that uh, we could have bought something from our shop and then used it but you know unless we get money equals power it's pretty unlikely to actually have any relevance at all that was the worst dodge. Like, that one, I actually planned accordingly and then failed to execute on the plan in a big way. Where is my teleport card? We should still pick up the pennies. You never know if one of them is accidentally, you know, like a luck upgrade or something like that. Nickels may be valuable enough to wait on, though. Ooh, is that it? The moon? That is indeed a teleport card. So that is boss rush for free. And fire mind is possibly really, really bad with low shot speed. Uh, I anticipate myself... Probably hitting myself more than I'd like with- Ah, it's my key! He gave me a golden chest. Which is actually totally fine because we have uh, golden keys. Uh, but these are still our keys for now. You never know, we might want to do the hush fight on this one, man. Do the hush fight. This is how you do the hush fight dance. This is how you do the hush fight dance. Joker card. You use Joker now. And uh, why do you use the Joker now? Because you want to use the moon anyway? Is that logical? No, not really, eh? Yeah, we say A in Canada. It's not that big of a deal. A is a very useful word. I'm not going to go too hard on the issue here. But what it, what A is, and I've said this in videos before because I've spent the last five years pretty much talking like eight hours a day into this goddamn microphone. But uh, A is a conversational signal. That lets you know when it's socially polite to begin your line of reasoning. Yeah, you hear people uh, not from Canada talk sometimes. They're always talking. Everyone's interrupting each other. They're imposing their will on one another via conversational means. That's the value of A as a conversational phrase. I mean, I'd rather moon card. It's less of a walk. Um, 
So you go, blah, 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 you know how it is, eh? And then the other person goes, okay, I take A as a sign that that person is done with their conversation, and I can move forward. And I know what you're going to say. Well, if you have any social intelligence, you can tell when someone is about to finish speaking. Yeah, okay, you, you know, if you have any social intelligence, you can imply that I was going to say thank you and you're welcome. But we still have a tendency to say those. Um... We don't have any fly items, so I think we'll maybe just take Evil Eye. Which I, I have a suspicion is probably going to be pretty bad with Fire Mines. But whatever. Again, we're still kind of balling here. Um, that's, that's the value of A. I'm not trying to say that every culture should have their own A. Americans kind of, they have huh. Uh, saying huh does not feel natural to me because of where I was raised. If I'd been raised in America, maybe I'd be extolling you on the values of huh right now. Perhaps in uh, in uh, British English, you could say in it. I've heard that before. Or cheers is another one. I tell you, when Kate and I were in uh, the UK last year, this dude was like, you know, excuse me, I'm not going to imitate his accent because it was his fucking country. That'd be pretty insensitive. This fucking, this British guy in London was like talking to me in his accent and I was like, whoa, buddy, where are you from? No, but uh, he he was like, uh, hey, can you take a picture of my girlfriend and I at this aquarium? And I took the picture and he was like, thanks, mate, you're a top bloke. And I was like, yo, I didn't actually say this. I said, you know, you're, yeah, whatever, you're welcome. But in my head, I was like, I, you probably didn't mean it as patronizing, but all I did was take a picture, you know, we, when you say, like, we got top men on something, you're talking about, like, you know, an aeronautics engineer who's worked at NASA for, like, 25 years or something like that. We're like, oh, don't worry, John Glenn, we got top men trying to make sure your spaceship comes home. Not, way to go, you know, you fucking glorified, you know, simian here, you press the button on my phone, and as a result... Technology much smarter than you'll ever be popped off and uh, now I got a picture of myself and my girlfriend in front of this, you know, manta ray. This is a little patronizing. But I had to I, I had to restrain myself. You know, you're a top bloke might just be how some people say thank you. And I, I took it the wrong way. I think he was being nice. I hope he was because if he's being patronizing, yo, that, that's not cool, eh? That, that was the rare adversarial A that is used for, for fighting. The one thing, you know, I talk about the South Park portrayal of Canadians all the time. The only thing that bugs me about the South Park portrayal of Canadians is when people think that that's how we, like, really talk. They'll be like, hey, do, your, do you have no uh, neck but your head just, uh, like, unattaches at its jaw? No, that doesn't make any sense at all. I mean, you've seen... America's sweetheart Jim Carrey in several films. You propelled him to superstardom. Does his head do that? No, it's just funny. Then people go like, hey, you're from Canada? I'm not your buddy, guy. And I'm like, I've never fucking heard anyone say that up here. I have a sense of humor about it. The only thing I don't have a sense of humor about is like, you're, you're copying someone else's jokes who's much funnier than you are at my expense to some extent and then expecting me to laugh at your unoriginality. When it's on South Park, I laugh. And I say, hey, this is funny, because it's, it's poking fun at us, we can laugh at ourselves. When you take someone else's joke, and then repeat it back to someone of that race, it just makes you look kind of like a tool. Not race, I guess, but that nationality. It's like, I would never go up to uh, an Indian American or Indian Canadian man and repeat like a Russell Peters joke or something like that, and make you look like a fucking idiot. You don't, there's no context for it. You didn't come up with that joke, even if you did, you know. I, I wouldn't advocate going up to, to anybody of any race and telling a racist joke and then expecting it to to, you know, tickle their fancy even if it is funny. Especially if it's at their expense. What we should be doing, and this applies to all races, is going up to other races and telling a joke about our own race. It would be like show and tell. We'd be like, look at all the things that are funny about the way that white people act. I don't know, though. We're getting into some dangerous territory for an Isaac video here. But, you know, there used to be that website that was, like, stuff white people love. And I was like, I like a lot of this stuff. I can't deny it. What, here, like, one, what do, what do, what do people like myself love? 
In Vancouver, complaining about housing prices. Man, you get a group of us together, we can complain about some housing prices. There is no doubt about that. And that's about as far as I'm willing to go with this joke. Thank you, good night. Um, this is this is the easiest win of all time. Why am I not fighting Hush? Firemind plus Hush equals a recipe for me being mad at myself in the morning, even if I'm going to love it tonight. If not uh, Hush, we could try to fight Mega Satan, but that's kind of outside the bounds of our own control, unfortunately. Dude, Firemind, yo, cool it, man. Shit's getting hotter than the Vancouver housing market up in here. <laughs> I know, right? Like, it's crazy. Okay, move it along here. Friends till the end. Uh, it's okay. Anything that gives us a, a benefit and also allows us to get a benefit out of another pill and or tarot card is nice, which is pretty much what this does for us. We can use friends till the end whenever we get a card that is better, and then it doesn't require us to hold it in order to get a benefit out of it that may be nebulous and or never exists. It's going to be a really fast run as well. We'll probably be done before 30 minutes. Um, we've been we've been playing the meta pretty nicely here, staying on curve and other such Magic the Gatherings. We do have Stompy, get some spirit arts out of that. We go, you know, 8 HP, full HP, 8 HP, full HP. Don't mind if I do. Bombs are key. Why not? I mean, we've been getting so many golden chests. We actually do have Guppy's Tail now. We picked it up recently because I said its name three times in a rum. And in a rum! Three times in a run it's been summoned. One of the M's made its way out of summoned and found its way into run instead. Don't really care about the bombs, if I'm being honest. The only way I can care about those is if we get sad bombs. And if we get sad bombs, it's not going to take 18 of them to make our run tick anyway. Every room is going to... Be pretty impressive there. That was my key! Although, to be honest with you, with uh, 18 keys, we're probably okay giving uh, Greed Beggar, or sorry, Key Beggar, uh, the, the keys, and then he can summon chests for us on the chest. That should be good. Yeah, why not? Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted, actually. I don't want him to pay out yet. Because if he pays out, then he's going to be further away from a payout on the chest. So if he can get, like, one key away from paying out, that's ideal. Trying to get Evil Eye to actually get in there. Yo, that was pretty good. Evil Eye Fire Mind is like, especially with the Cancer Trinket, is pretty sweet if you're not using it right next to where you are. If you are, then you're just, you know, resign yourself to taking a little bit of damage. Alright. Get stuck in here. You can see that our damage, unfortunately, is not that good. It's really just a product of our fire rate, and if we can get an enemy to stand inside of the fire, like the inverse of that famous Garth Brooks song from In Pieces. Oh, we got it, we got it, we got it, and we got it. Okay, down to the next floor. Strike to claim it, strike to claim it, and you got it, that is right, I did it. Number four, are you kidding me? Boom, 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 boom. I want you in my room. Lusty Blood is great. Spun via Speedball is amazing. Range down means nothing, and Holy Mantle is awesome. So this is, uh, without a doubt, like an A, A-plus level chest here. Lusty Blood is so good. Holy Mantle is so good, even if it is uh, overkill. And uh, being able to get spun, awesome. Basically, plus two damage for doing nothing. And we got the shot speed and speed upgrade uh, along with it. So definitely uh, synergistic effect there between the syringes and... Like I said, your boy Northern Lion with the crazy effective technique to get spun. It turns out all you gotta do is maximize your syringe drops. Who knew? It's so easy. When everybody's trying to cheese me, babe. Uh, we're still looking for keys. That's the, that's the rub right now. Succubus, don't act like you've been there before, okay? I mean, what I mean to say is act like you've been there before. Okay, hot bombs. In case we needed another synergy uh, that we already have. Spoilers, we don't. Nothing there. Mm. Pop off some hot bomb action here. 
And at this point, I mean, we're riding out the clock. And by riding out the clock, I mean we're running down a dream. By running down a dream, I mean life is a highway and I'm going to ride it all night long. And by life is a highway and I'm going to ride it all night long, I mean take me down to the paradise city where the grass is green and the girls are pretty. What I'm trying to say is that I'm basically just feeling my way around here to figure out where the fuck the boss fight is. And pretty much as soon as we find it, this run is complete and we will win. Uh, Lifesteal does nothing. Chocolate milk, uh is probably bad to take here because our tier rate is so good but even a bad chocolate milk it's pretty difficult for it to be like actually not I mean let me put it this way it's possible that it makes our run less optimal but to destroy it we need a lot more than this because the damage from a single chocolate milk shot is still quite quite nice so uh, even if this is slightly less or markedly less DPS it, it can't really come close to shitting on the entire run. And I mean, in the end, if we decide we don't like uh, what Chocolate Milk is doing for us, we just, uh, you know, tap shoot anyway. And really, the only victim is you at home, who will have your ears polluted. Should have let uh, Key Beggar take that. Who will have your ears polluted by the sounds of my mechanical keyboard. Slightly more frequently than usual. Alrighty. Please, 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 please. I don't know what that song was supposed to be. There was a way it was supposed to be like, please, please me, but then it just never got there. It's like if they were like, you know, Paul McCartney, John Lennon, and George Harrison were in a hotel room together while Ringo Starr was out getting fucking blasted. We've got please, and then we've got another please, but I don't know what comes next. Maybe you just keep going. What about another please? Please, please, please. Uh, that'll never work. I don't know. Not, none of those were Paul McCartney or George Harrison. The middle one might have been a failed John Lennon attempt. Just imagine that George Harrison sounds like that. I can't do a Paul McCartney impression. I, like, I'm even looking for a joke in there. I can't find one. That'll do it, then. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.